Hello and welcome to Digging Documents. My name is Alicia Stella and we are going to get right into where we left off last time. We were talking about magic and a possible energy emitter that could be used for magic wand effects, whether it be in a show or an interactive element or even a dark ride. Um, and I wanted to also get into what I originally started to get into for that last video but got sidetracked by the energy beams was a new type of projection mapping patent. I have talked in a video about this patent in particular, uh, which was a suspended ride system that created like an elevator effect. It would go up into one room and then it would come back into another room and the scenery would change as you go from room to room. So as if you're going from lots of different places, but really you're just going to the same two. I don't think this is what they're actually using for the Ministry of Magic attraction now. Uh, I think they're using more of like a Spider-Man uh, Transformers ride system. But when they were developing this type of ride system, uh, see like there's a screen here, but when you come come down here, there's it, the, the thing changes and you change directions. And then when you come back up, you're in a different place and there's an animatronic. It's crazy stuff. Um, but one of the technologies that was going to be involved in this was adaptable projection map show scenes where the scene itself would change while you're still in it, uh, which could be used for a variety of ways. And then this popped up just a couple months ago talking about just that. So let's get into this one. It's called Dynamic Projection Mapping for Morphing Set Pieces. It actually reminds me of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Let's just read it real quick. Uh, the present disclosure describes an amusement show system. The amusement show system includes guest seating, a background display, a conveyor, and a set piece disposed on the conveyor. The conveyor moves the set piece with respect to the guest seating between the guest seating and the background display. The amusement show system also includes a projection mapping system that includes one or more projectors configured to project images onto the set piece such that a first image is projected onto the set piece at a first point in time and a second image is projected onto the set piece at a second point in time. So the projection mapping system is projection mapped onto these objects which are moving on some kind of conveyor belt in front of a background. I've talked about before and like I feel like this is the future of screens on rides where it's not just a parallax effect on a, on a flat screen but we need some foreground stuff to really sell the effect. We need things moving or set pieces in real space in the foreground to better sell the background. And when we start getting into LED screens, I think it'll be easier because it's hard with projections to see other objects. With the LEDs, it creates a light source and allows for things in the room to be seen and not have to worry about drowning out um, the screen with lighting. Um, and here it talks about how this could be for maneuvering amusement ride vehicle which provide and providing a dynamic background display in coordination with the move maneuvering of an amusement ride vehicle and transitioning a set piece along a conveyor such that the set piece moves along a path uh, between the ride vehicle and the background display. The reason this comes to mind when thinking about the Ministry of Magic ride is that the Ministry of Magic ride was being designed with very like a very small footprint uh, in, in the original well, the original was a trackless ride, but the second version uh, had an elevator system that could go up, go down, and every time it does, scenery could physically change on one of the levels, but then also it could use adaptable projection mapped show scenes to make it look like you're not just sitting in a top floor, but you're actually moving side to side or forward and back, even though you're not actually going anywhere by moving the sets around you or by using projection maps that look like the sets are moving around you. So getting into this, it really does feel like your ride vehicle could be stationary and the sets could be moving and the background video could be moving to make it look like you're actually going somewhere. Um, and in the new version, it's rumored to be like the Transformers uh, Spider-Man ride vehicle. So you could pull into a scene 
and sit in this scene and not know you're not actually going somewhere, but still continue the motion, especially for something as wild as the elevators in the, the ministry, where you can go up and down and left and right, forward and backward, and at a high rate of speed, too. <laughs> uh, the same set piece may appear to be completely different objects at different points in time. This may include transitioning between geometries while the set piece is visible to guests or while it is concealed from guests. By moving the set piece relative to the seating and transitioning an appearance of the set piece using one or both of projection mapping and adjustable geometric configuration, present embodiments may create an illusion of transition or movement for guests observing from the seating. For example, the set piece may appear to change size to suggest a change in perspective associated with the relative movement, or the set piece may appear as different objects at different points in time to suggest a transition between locations or settings. Example, a picnic table in a first setting and a television set in a second setting. This illusion of transition or movement may be provided in conjunction with actual movement, to create an impression of moving between areas or rooms while guests remain in the seating and do not traverse large areas of real estate. Um, and that's some of that description is exactly the uh, finale for Runaway Railway, where one scene in a factory transitions before your eyes into a scene at the park. Um, but I think in this context, it's more about creating a bigger sense of space than you're actually in. If you look at the aerial photos for the Ministry of Magic, again, I'm just guessing. This is just a guess. You're you're seeing my process unfold behind the scenes. But looking at the 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 the, the layout is starting to take shape on this ministry attraction. And it is going to be just some hallways and corridors and we don't even know if there's going to be an elevator but if there is an elevator it could be like the Transformers elevator um, or it could be a simulated elevator this could be a situation where like Gringotts you're stopping in front of a scene but unlike Gringotts you actually think you're still going it doesn't need a big footprint to create the impression of a massive attraction Advantages of the described embodiments may include a reduction in the amount of space required to change sets in an amusement show. The techniques described may also allow guests to experience an illusion of movement across rooms in diff into different physical sets without actually moving the guests to different sets. Indeed, using the techniques described herein, various contexts and locations may be simulated in a single room during an attraction experience, thus providing the illusion of movement across rooms or locations. Indeed, it may be desirable to reduce an amount of space necessary to change context provided in an amusement show due to limited availability of real estate. And even if this isn't for the ministry attraction, if it's for... Um, something new in somewhere like Japan or Singapore where space is severely limited or Hollywood space is severely limited. It, it, it brings to mind the Spider-Man ride at California Adventure where space is severely limited in that building to create something. And there is a moment or two where you think like you, it doesn't feel like it, but it looks like you're going up uh, uh, because of the screen media. If they could do something where a small amount of motion, which they do really well in Transformers, where you're only moving uh, like 10 feet to the left, but it really feels like you're driving down the street for a long extended sequence. If they could do a, take a small amount of motion and then create not just screen movement, but foreground objects as well. Oh, there's no more images. I think, I think it could really change the way we take small footprint rides uh, instead of just a simulator in front of a screen, but actually put some physical objects in the foreground. It's a pretty neat idea. It's worth looking into a little bit more closely. Uh, and one other thing, it does talk about the sets changing. Um, while some of this is described it as uh, making it look like it's getting closer or farther away from you, uh, another idea is that you could be like teleported within a ride from one location to another. And by using the projection effects, um, going from one projection effect to another projection effect seamlessly, you don't even have to like turn off all the lights and then turn them back on like uh, Cosmic Rewinds pre-show. You could actually have a scene 
transform from one location to another before your eyes, maybe not as cartoony as Runaway Railway, but more in an instant where one projection system, and that's why they display two, one t- t- projection system turns off and another one turns on at exactly the right moment uh, using the same objects projects different settings. So the background and the foreground change. Uh, that's why it says like a picnic table turns into a TV. Um So you could be, you know, teleported away or um, what do they use? Port key, port keyed away um, within one room to another room uh, in a Harry Potter ride or or any other kind of ride experience. So there's different possibilities here. This one was published May 5th, 2022. So not that long ago. Uh, It was originally filed September 2021. Uh, invented here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, where was the wand one from? And the wand one also uh, Orlando. I mean, Universal Creative is headquartered in Orlando, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's for Orlando, but it is interesting. I do like to look at the date and when it was published to kind of see if it's something that's happening now or if it's something that happened in the past. And if we see, we'll see this in the future. Not all patents that are patented by Universal get used. I'd say maybe two out of 10, if that. Although we do see a lot of like um, small patents for improvements to things like augmented reality that I think they are using. So it's just ones we talk about, not everything. Like this uh, suspended system not is not going to be used, uh, but it gives us some insight into what type of ride experience they were designing with it. Uh, same thing with this. You know, we're looking at this with a conveyor belt going left and right, but it also could just as easily be a conveyor belt going up and down, and it could be for elevators instead of uh, moving side to side. I don't know. Is this the next uh, like evolution of the Dreamfinder turntable? Uh, are we just gonna sit here and like a long time like pass like things are just passing us by over minutes? Don't know. And if you enjoyed the Digging Documents episode, check out our other episodes and subscribe to this, our second channel, um, Park Stop Presents. But also check out the main channel, Theme Park Stop, for our actual news stories. And, you know, who knows if we start to see more permit information or rumors start to line up with some of this information, it might make it into a news video soon. Thanks for watching, y'all. Bye.